Suns out, guns out. The Bears are finally in the win column. The Jags are back in London again for their second game, this time against the Buffalo Bills. Are the Bills legit? Can the Jags show the rest of the AFC that they're the real deal? Showdown in the Bay. Is Dallas due for an ugly day against that vaunted Niners D? Or will the star shine bright on the West Coast? In Cincinnati and Arizona. Here we go, folks. Is this the last gas for Burrow and the Bengals? Will Calf Gate end it all for them this week? And speaking of the Bears, the National Football League family lost a beloved founding father this week. We'll see just how much inspiration the Bears got out of the passing of their legendary torch holder, Dick Buckus. Week five, folks, here we are. Just past the quarter section of the season. Very excited. Welcome to Sunday Scaries with Bucks McGee and my cohort, the one and only Nutmeg to Palmetto. Oh man, folks, it's getting a little interesting now. We've got some games that are, have a little bit of peak, a little interest there, Nutmeg. So what are you thinking? Well, we, we have to start the show by giving yes. a little bit of a chest pat and a hats off to these Chicago Bears. They've done it, folks. <laughs> they have done it. Off the schneid. <laughs> just took them a little bit of time, but yes, Justin Fields showed up, and lo and behold, a victory. Very impressive. Very impressive. At least the first half was. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so... I guess the the rub is now we kind of got a little bit of a preview last week when they ran out of that big lead against Denver, and obviously Denver came back and, and gave them the L, but we kind of got a little bit of a preview of how, how much potential Justin Fields in the offense actually does have. Mm -hmm. But so I don't know if the explosion on Thursday is, can be categorized so much as a surprise. But what was a surprise to me is the fact that this Redskins team, uh, sorry, Washington Commanders. No, no, no. <laughs> that this defense got absolutely run on. And and on top of that, Sam Howell wound up putting up almost 400 yards, but it was a slow going of 400 yards. So the offense looked sluggish. The defense got exposed. And we were thinking, like, okay, this Washington team, maybe they've got a little bit to play. Maybe they're, may, may, they may not, they probably won't win the division. They may not get a wild card, but maybe they'll sniff it. Maybe the team will be a spoiler. So w after seeing what the Bears did to them, how do we re envision what this Washington team really is? Wash, the game was just weird. Like the play calling just seemed off. Scary Terry was barely in the offensive plan from what I saw. Yeah, I don't know if Chicago, I don't know if Chicago focused on taking him out totally, but it just seemed like I think he had like three receptions. Maybe he just seemed way off. The run game was non-existent. It's almost like they just wanted to throw the ball exclusively. It felt like, and it just it, they just didn't vibrate. I think it goes more to the play calling. I'm 
I honestly have this feeling that this could be Riverboat Ron's last last hurrah. I really feel that maybe they need a new voice. They uh, sh- Chicago Chicago put it on them in the first half. Chicago was impressive the first half. Second half, not so much. Yeah. But Chicago built up a big enough lead where, you know, for some reason, Washington just couldn't run the ball. And, yeah, Howell put up 400 yards. But like you said, it was a slow 400. Yeah, like you said, Terry McLaurin was invisible. Brian Robinson was invisible. Like, all their big playmakers just mm-hmm. didn't show up this game. And I don't know, like you said, play calling or to off night or whatever, the, the, their big weapons weren't there. Uh, and the strange part is that they, they Pat McAfee said on, on his Friday show that Ron Rivera looks like he doesn't even have any interest in coaching anymore. Yeah. Remember when he first got there, there was that fire, you know, there was that fire that Ron had. And now it's just kind of like he's standing there almost like he's, you know, dead man walking. Like he was like, I know it's it's about to end. I'm going to get fired. I'm just going to, you know, just stand here. They, yeah, there was no fire. Magic Johnson even said it. They, they played with no fire, no heart. So it's a situation of do they need a new voice in that locker room? Is it time for a change? Now, I think Ron has done a hell of a job there, especially with how that franchise was being run with, you know, Dan Snyder and all of all that drama. But maybe it's time for a new voice. Maybe they need to go younger, you know, because let's be honest, the league now has a bunch of younger coaches and, you know, it's time to turn the page. You know, a lot of these older coaches need to understand you either need to move on, get hip to what's going on, or you're a relic. And maybe it's Ron's time. But the second half of that game, the Bear, you know, I'll give the Bears all the credit in the world for the first half. Second half, the you know, Washington, you know, their defense showed up a bit more. Uh, they they did have some blown coverages. That's how, you know, Moore got his last touchdown, which I don't know how that happened, but hey. I think that's I'll take the fantasy points. Too. <laughs> I'll take those fantasy points though. <laughs> but um you know, you give the Bears credit. They needed the win, but it's one win. They they got a lot to go through. If they end up losing another two or three, this game really doesn't mean much. I, I think that's how he got his first touchdown, too. <laughs> I was like, what is going on here, man? It's like they just said, let them run wild. Yeah. But the Bears also got a lot of injuries on the on the running back, running on the running backs. So they've got to really look at those. They had three guys end up getting bounced out of the game. They went with their full back for the fourth quarter. So they're, they've got to, you know, clean some stuff up there too. But, hey, a win's a win. Chicago. I mean, you brought up the play calling as a question mark for Washington. That's not Riverboat Ron's territory. That's all Eric Bieniemy. So how much blame do you put on the Thursday loss to the Bears on Eric Bieniemy? A good chunk. It, it it was just weird. Like, I'm watching the game, and it's like they were just sending him out. And they, I think they just thought that Sam was just gonna th- be able to throw all over that defense. Ooh. Now the Bears have their the Bears have their issues. There's no doubt about it. But when healthy, their defense is somewhat solid. Their secondary is okay. But it, there was like no short routes, nothing really extravagant. You know, nothing simple like you know crossers or anything. You didn't see anything like that really till you know Scary Terry touched the ball in like the third fourth quarter, where you know it was like all right, maybe they're gonna start running some crossers maybe something short just to move the ball because they couldn't run it. But no, it just seemed like they sent everybody 10, 15 yards and were hoping for the best. And unfortunately that wasn't the best and the bears ended up winning. My last point on Chicago is just the fact that you think like they have Carolina's draft pick this year. Carolina is now Carolina was running with them as Owen as winless teams. And now Carolina is the only winless team left. It's like all of a sudden you think like Chicago, what are you doing? Stop winning games. You got you're lined up to have the top two picks in the draft. <laughs> no, because you're thinking they're gonna go on some like four or five game win streak. Yeah, no, that, that's not gonna happen. Like I like it was great to see Justin Fields do what you know everyone thinks he can do. But I think at some point if they end up with with the first, second, second pick, then they may change. They may say, All right, Justin, this just isn't you're not the fit for us. We're going to trade you. It could happen. Like, let's yeah. be realistic. You know, it all depends. 
I don't know if Caleb Williams comes out because let's be real. He's the guy. Yeah. And, and do the bears really want to fall in the echelon with another Chicago professional sports franchise for drafting on an all time great talent at the top of the draft <laughs> and falling to ironically, possibly number three. <laughs> Wow, man. You just go ahead and jinx them something fierce. <laughs> wow. If it happens, it happens. There you go. Lessons learned. Sometimes you just got to let Washington win. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chicago did do some other moves this week. Uh, Matt Eberflus's job is safe for another week, but they also dealt away uh, former Steelers, all former Steelers, Hot start receiver who's been nothing more than a towel holder in, in Chicago. <laughs> Chase Claypool, they sent him to Miami. And I kind of feel like now you look at Justin Fields the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. and you figure, okay, the kid can obviously throw. Mm -hmm. Has he totally shaken off the, the Ohio State thing? Maybe not quite, but. Maybe there's a little bit of shine left that we haven't seen yet. But mm -hmm. early, you know, when he first came in the league, that shine wasn't there. So you're almost thinking, like, maybe this is a timing thing. Like, Claypool goes to, Claypool goes to Chicago, and Justin Fields isn't ready yet. So he kind of gets buried on the depth chart, doesn't play, DNP, coach's decision, that sort of stuff. So going to Miami now, is this kind of like, okay, if you can't succeed with Tua, who's just humming the ball around 40 times a game, throwing to everybody under the sun. If you can't win with Tua, if you can't produce with Tua, then maybe you're just not fit to be in the NFL anymore. That could be it. Like, honestly, Chicago right now is not in a, not a place where, you know, a young receiver should be, especially if you think you're, you're a guy who should be seeing, you know, six to maybe eight, eight balls thrown to you a game. I think Claypool kind of feels that he is, kind of better than he is. I think he wanted to come in and maybe be the guy or be, you know, 1B to, mm -hmm. you know, DJ Moore. And the way that the Bears are running that offense and just the insanity that's running around there just didn't work for him. So he probably copped an attitude and here you go. So, yes, now he gets to go to sunny Miami and he's going to have to learn where his pecking order is. Like, let's be realistic. It's Tyreek, Waddle. The running backs, let's hey. be real. Yeah. Uh, then you're going to go with everybody else. So if he's happy with maybe three or four balls a game to him, then that's fine. But he better perform because if he's still dropping balls, not running routes, and just showing a lazy side, they're not going to put up with that. Miami is ready to win now, and they yeah. don't need that in the locker room. He'll end up out of the league in a heartbeat. Like, because this is honestly like a last gasp, I believe. He either gets it right here in Miami, you play play good soldier, do whatever you need to do, and resurrect your career. If not, good seeing you, Clay Chase Claypool. I'm just I'm just impressed. I'm just happy we got trades. The NFL trade deadline is like the most forgotten one of the four major professional sports. <laughs> it is. But in recent years, it has gotten a little better. Yeah. It has gotten a little, little better. But, you know, it's nice to get a little something here and there. We're, we're seeing NFL names. franchises impatient. <laughs> yep, because if you don't win within two to three years, you know, there's a problem. No one's, yeah. If you're that or if you're not at least a playoff team, there's a problem. So, Which is funny. You know, the cap keeps going up, 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 up. And yet there's less and less, less money to go around. <laughs> well, when you're paying your quarterbacks 40, 50 million, yeah. that's the problem. <laughs> that's be realistic. That's yeah. the problem. If the cap goes up and your top player's contract goes up, then your situation doesn't change all that much. <laughs> no, you're still where you're at. It doesn't make a difference, but I'm not a mathematician. I don't know these things. Now, <laughs> we would have been happy enough just to get one trade at the deadline. We got two and on the same day. <laughs> Denver, wow, like Christmas. Denver just gave Randy Gregory, formerly of the Cowboys, a big a, a big old contract. And Denver being what they are this year, as we've tossed around numerous times to our um fun our, our fun loving fun loving humorous delight. Uh 
Denver has no need for a defensive lineman on a on a win now team because that is certainly what they are not. They send them off to the Niners because, yeah, the Niners don't need any more good defensive players. What are you talking about? Defense is their weakest link, man. <laughs> Everybody knows the Niners are struggling on defense. You know, Bosa and those cats, Armstead, those guys are struggling. Like, they need somebody now. <laughs> that Fred uh, Warner guy, what a bum. He seriously <laughs> has been middle linebacker. Like, what does he really do? Like, really? You know? But, yeah, no, Niners are smart. And you know what? I guarantee you, Gregory's going to have a rebirth. He will have a rebirth. And he'll fit in there nicely. They'll get an even better rotation because what's going to happen is late in the season, they're just going to start a rotation, bringing guys in fresh. And I'm sorry, that Niners team, especially that defense, when they're fresh, scary. Yeah. So, no, I think it's a smart move, smart pickup. Yeah. I mean, they've had a couple games this year where they've given up over 20 points. And I was like, okay, 20 points in today's NFL is really not that much. But 20 points of this Niners defense. Eh. But now, like yeah. you're saying, if they can just rotate guys and keep them fresh. That twenty points is gonna is gonna go down pretty quickly. <laughs> exactly, and who knows this this may not be the end of deals going down. Because let's be honest, I'm sure the Broncos are looking at their team saying, "Okay, we're kind of planning for the future. There's yeah. some higher, there's some high salaries we're gonna get rid of." So I wouldn't be surprised if more more of these things happen out of Denver, but also out of other teams in the league. Let's be honest, and teams like the Niners who want to win now. We'll pick those players up and deal with the consequences later. Yeah. Denver's saying, oh, what can we get for Russ Wilson? A bag of balls and a Gatorade cooler? No one's taking that. They're like, yeah, okay, cool. XFL season hasn't started yet. <laughs> oh, swap him out, swap him to the XML, XML and call up former XFL superstar Ben DiNucci. Ben DiNucci. If you don't know, look him up. Respect to the DiNucci. <laughs> Respect to the Danucci. There's a, there, there's our uh, token Ben Danucci uh, shout out in every show. And that's it. We got to keep them coming fresh. <laughs> Danucci, baby. Switching over to our top three games this weekend. So we're going <laughs> to start off uh, as it kicks off uh, short, a short time from now over in Merry Old London. Um, Buffalo, oh, excuse me, the Jags host their second, their second of back to back games over there. And mm -hmm. before, of course, they come home to welcome our sights into uh, <laughs> Altel Stadium. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. But they yeah, don't get I mean, easy. I mean, last week they got a little easy. They got to host the Falcons. I don't know if the Falcons have ever played over there, ever played an international game. And, of course, the Falcons mm -hmm. are not uh, on their strongest legs right now, despite that 2-0 start to the season. Um, but... No. They took care of business. They brought after the Lions kicked them around. They brought the the Falcons. Uh, continue to bring the Falcons back down to earth, and who knows where they're going to go. But the Jags look kind of like the Jags where we expected them to. But now they get a real test. Buffalo comes in red hot. They had a little bit of a slug fight at the beginning of last week's game against Miami, uh, and then they ran and then they ran away from the Dolphins as the game progressed, which looked mm -hmm. which made them look a lot better off of blowouts against uh really poor poor opposition. So mm -hmm. do we think this is going to be a situation where Buffalo maybe has a little bit of jet lag and Jacksonville's fresh because they've already been already been over there for a week and a half going into this game or uh is Buffalo just going to keep this momentum going riding high and say all right Jacksonville I know you're I know you're uh running fresh right now it's starting to get your wheels back under you but it's still our turf in this in this conference. The jet lag could play a, play a part in it. You know, the Jags have been there for two weeks. So, you know, they at this point should be comfortable, should be like any other day for them. The Jags need to understand that this is, a, this is an important game. This is definitely a measuring stick game for them. If they come out flat and just let Buffalo run ramshot like they did last week, no one's going to take this Jags team seriously at all. They're – almost going to be an afterthought. It's going to be like, okay, the Jags. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Let's look for next year. Yeah. Uh, the Jags really need – they need to be able to run the ball. The run game really needs to be strong this game for them. And the Prince himself, 
Ten. Trevor Lawrence. He missed some throws there last week, and this week he really needs to make sure he hits those hits those throws. There were a couple that were just out of the reach of Kirk and stuff like that. He needs to, you know, really be on point with those guys because if they leave points on the field, if Buffalo can get over the jet lag, then I, I, I can see Buffalo winning this game. Yeah. Um proverbial gun to your head. They're both very good teams, obviously. Who do who do you think would who do you think is gonna come out on top? Right now, if I'm looking at looking at the season, I'm gonna give Buffalo the slight edge. I think Buffalo the last couple weeks has been a little more consistent. Yeah. So I'll give Buffalo the edge, but if if Jacksonville comes out running the ball and, like I said, Trevor's, you know, hitting his passes like he should, it could be a high-scoring game, and I think the Jags, Jags will have a shot. Like, um, I don't think they can't beat Buffalo. I think they can, but just they need to come out, be hungry, and really this is the statement game for them. If not, if they're just going to fall farther back in that lovely division of, of greatness there and – Great. That's greatness. Hey, for, for the shoe, for, yeah, for the shoe there, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, this game is definitely. I hate to use. I don't want to. It's almost a must win. Yeah. Just I believe just so they can show everybody, hey, we are legitimate. And what everybody said in the preseason is true. We are a legitimate team to be reckoned with. Uh, if the game does, if the game game does go the way you forecast it. How does that shake down the rest of the season in the AFC? Um, how how does that now shake up Buffalo with two with two wins now over the Dolphins and the Jaguars? And how does that shake down the Jags with the with a bit with really no convincing wins over good teams? At that point, Buffalo's probably feeling pretty good about themselves. Let's be honest. Buffalo's like, okay, we've handled two of you know the supposed higher end teams in the AFC. So they're feeling good about themselves. The Jags are going to, you know, sit down and say, well, this is, this isn't how we pictured the season's going. So we've got to figure this out, figure it out quick. You know, they still have time for the division and all that, you know, it's not, you know, hit the emergency, you know, alarm and go insane, but you really need to look at what you got going on and fix those little things because those little things that you can't do are what the elite teams do. So I think that's the difference right now. Jacksonville needs to learn to do those little things that's going to carry him to that next level. Buffalo's going to sit there and say, all right, well, we're getting better. We're getting better. This is who we beat. The only other team we need to worry about is Kansas City, let's be honest. Yeah. Right now, that's the only other team Buffalo really needs to worry about right now. Oh, how things, how some things change and some things stay the same. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, the, the, possibly the crown jewel game of the weekend is the Sunday nighter. So <laughs> our top three games, we went through one that starts Sunday. We go through one that ends Sunday, <laughs> um, is a, uh, game. We hinted at it right off the top of the show, Dallas going out to the Bay area, Bay area. They're playing the Niners. <laughs> All the, jo- there's been a lot of jokes this week about how many picks that Prescott is going to throw against the defense. <laughs> Wow. So like I I mean Dallas has had a good start to the season. Uh they've mm-hmm. whooped up on some poor teams. They had that absolute no show against the Cardinals. Uh mm-hmm. and the Niners have just looked like a very efficient team. They've they've had a little bit of moments where they play a little tight, but they pull away, you know. Mm-hmm. So this like but but they're still but they're still winning. They don't look like they're missing a whole lot. So, mm-hmm. I mean, are the jokes going to become more reality? Is is Dak Prescott going to have a rough a rough game against the Niners, D? Here's the situation. You look at Dallas so far this season. The games they've won, their defense has been has been has been the reason they've won, let's be honest. The defense has been so dominant that the offense really hasn't had to carry that team. That's Let's be realistic. You know, against the Giants, the defense pretty much outscored the Giants. So it's what you know, like so Dak could have like th- thrown you know eleven to seventeen and just you know whatever. 
Like he didn't have to really do anything. Dak has yet to really have to carry this team this season. This could be the game where Dak has got to Dak's got to perform. If it's a situation where Dak's got to make a throw, you know, Dak's got to get that first down, you know, and, and the defense isn't holding up their end. Can that offense do it? Right now, you have to give them an incomplete because they haven't had to do that yet. Yeah. So, who knows? Do I do I think Dak's gonna throw two to three picks, and it's gonna be one of those games where you're like, "Oh man, thirty-seven to three. What the heck happened here?" <laughs> no. But if you're telling me there's a you know a third and six, and Dak's got to make the throw, do I trust he makes that throw? Uh, no. Not really. When it comes to the Niners, like you said, efficient. They they score when they have to. No issues. Brock Purdy's doing his thing. He had he doesn't have to carry the team, but he performs. You know, when you got CMC doing his thing, that takes a load off of you know Purdy. That defense now with Gregory is even more more potent. And I think that offense plays to Purdy's strengths. They don't force him to do anything he can't do. So it's going to be interesting to see if Dallas can really pin their ears back and get after him. Do you think that the Niners have been as good as they've been, as, as uh, efficient as they've been? Do you think they've really been tested this year? They got they played the Steelers, which they whooped up on. They played the Rams, which played them a little tight than they probably expected, but divisional rival. Mm-hmm. But we know what the Rams are. They played mm-hmm. the Giants, whooped up on them, even though it was close for a <laughs> half. And then they played the Cardinals, and despite a little bit of a fight that they put up, the Niners pulled away from them. So do you think that the Niners have actually really been tested this year? Maybe this is like – you say this is a, the, a big test for Dallas. Maybe it's a big test for San Francisco as well. Oh, no, totally. No, this is this is a legitimate test for them. Like you said, they've played teams that, you know, like the Rams, you know, Rams have been a surprise offensively. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's be honest. You know, they, they've put up points. So it's one of those things where, yeah, so, you know, if you take Dallas for what they are on paper, this is the most complete team that they've faced so far. And this team should should give them quite the challenge. But paper is one thing. Reality is another. Dallas, this year, at their best, have been have been great because of their defense. It hasn't been a total total team effort in that sense. I need to see their offense really put some points up. I need to see Dak, you know, really throw the ball. You know, Pollard, you know, put up 100 yards. Unfortunately, you don't have that back who can, you know, take the hits. You know, short yardage guy. You got rid of him. <laughs> so now, you know, let's be realistic. They should have someone like that. They really don't. So if Pollard goes down, that that whole offense goes in upheaval. Dak needs to be smart and not try to do something that maybe he can't do or shouldn't do. So, no, this is definitely a test for the Niners. I think they're built for it. It's just whether the competition plays up to their level or shrinks, shrinks does down. What, and, does what Dak do. Yeah, Dak do what Dak do. <laughs> you know? You know, if he's got like two picks, two or three picks by halftime, you know, okay, fine, there you go. Just another day in Dallas. Do you think there's anything to his uh, rea- his uh, little oversensitive reaction to getting snippy with all the reporters this week? The the, the kid got- on Madden saying you suck. I I threw four interceptions with you. <laughs> <laughs> like really, man, you're making forty plus million a year, and you're gonna get mad at that. Come on. I know. Really? <laughs> like, let's be realistic here. Like, there are bigger things to be mad about than that, okay? You're the you're the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, you know, the, the greatest sports franchise in the world. You know, let's, be, let's call it what it is. And if you're going to let that bother you, there's a problem there, man. You need to put up the numbers. You can't sit there and get mad at anybody. Your body of work says otherwise. Let's be honest. Your body of work says otherwise. Until you turn that narrative around, this is what you've put out there. This is what people are going to believe. So either you do it or you're going to be, you know, Dak, whatever, and then Trey Lance will take your job in another year or two. <laughs> yeah, you know, if that $40 is not good enough, ship some over here. 
That'll fund Sunday Scaries remotes at the Super Bowl for the next few years and uh, and our presence at, at Tom Brady's Canton induction. Yeah, that's exactly it, man. I'm all about it. You want to see a grown man cry? You're about to see it. But, no, it's the truth. Like, let's be realistic, you know. And there were comments about maybe, you know, why when Dallas got Trey Lance, was this a situation where Dak doesn't perform this year? Yeah. Does Dak become trade bait? Why not? Hey, you yeah. know, that contract, real, you know, they can do a lot with that contract. Dak really needs to be the man now. Like, there's no more shoulda, coulda, woulda, oh, wow, maybe. No, you either put up or shut up. Oh, wow, maybe. Oh, well, my gosh, golly, gee. <laughs> Go do another chunky commercial or a bed commercial because that's about where you're headed. Well, there's been a lot of, oh, gosh, golly, gee, it, with the Bengals this season. Uh, I we, We've uh, talked about before, maybe Joe Burrow didn't take the time, the amount of time off he should have to, to heal that calf properly. And mm-hmm. now they go at one and three into the desert to play Arizona. And this Arizona Cardinals team, we joked around a lot that they were the automatic <laughs> buy this season. Uh, we didn't know that the Bears and the Panthers would be the automatic buy this season. Um, but Arizona has played really hard, or really above their head. Josh Dobbs playing like my man, Josh Dobbs, yeah, boy, playing better than at least a third of the quarterbacks in the league. <laughs> bet, you, bet you, Cleveland and the Steelers are saying we should have kept him. Yeah, really. <laughs> So, is this? I mean, talk about a must win. This has really got to be a make or break situ- situation for Cincinnati. This is no doubt a must win game. Arizona smells blood in the water. It's and in what that blood is Joe's calf just sitting there waiting. What should have happened is Joe shouldn't have started this season. He should have. Right. They should have. They, if they had to put him in the IR for the first four games to rest him, then that's what you should have done. Yeah, you tell me the backup couldn't have gone one and three. <laughs> like, let's be realistic. The worst you would have been is zero and four. <laughs> Whoop de do. <laughs> you know, at this point, what's better, one and three or zero and four? Doesn't improve your playoff odds much. Yeah. So it's a situation now where. My question is did is did Burrow push to start or did they or did was he like yeah I'm okay I could go if I have to and they were like well do you want to go and they pushed him to go like that's my question because Joe should have been like no I need to make sure even Chase had said hey man you know what let him rest when he comes back we'll be here well you can't play hero because now you're one and three and you need this game yeah you need this game and Arizona's defense you know. Aren't a lot of big names on that defense, but those guys are playing well as a unit. And we've seen what they've done so far this year. They can score. They can play. So, and definitely Cincinnati's not a team as of right now that I think can come back. If they go down a couple scores, I don't think that offense is in tune to come back. Okay. So if they lose and they fall to one and four, are they done? Is this it? Wow. Um, right now, if you if I have to say so, yes, I'd say they're done unless Joe somehow that calf miraculously heals and they start th- putting up thirty plus points a game. Yeah, I think I think they are looking at a long road to possibly possibly maybe being in the mix for the for the wild card, but not making it at the end of the season. One and one and four is not pretty, man. And if he is just not healthy and that calf is not healing right, no, it's a wrap. Some guys have been out six to nine weeks with bad calves. So you figure, let's say, if all of a sudden they sit him and he doesn't come back till week nine, and let's say they win what one more game. So what are you telling me? Two and seven? You're not doing anything. You're done. Their their only saving you know. grace is the fact that. One, we're just waiting for Baltimore to completely implode at this point. Uh, the Steelers, we have no idea when when they're going to show up, if they're going to show up. And Cleveland, mm-hmm. we don't even know if Sean Watson's going to play on a weekly basis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mr. I warm up and then 10 minutes before game time on my shoulder. I can't play. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cleveland. I feel bad for you. You know, I just should have kept Baker. Baker, bang. But anyways, I digress. That's, that's- 
That's going to be your new little ding. <laughs> That's right. Number 12, <laughs> ding, the Baker Bay, ding. But um, no, it's it's the truth. But even if that's the case, even if they were to somehow scratch and claw their way and maybe possibly win that division, there'd be no way they'd make it out of the first round of the playoffs. Not the way they're playing right now. They need a heavy dose of run, and they, they need to play ball control, and they need their defense to hold up. And I don't think that defense is 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 good enough especially the way this offense is where they're out on the field all this time. I don't think that defense holds up really don't. Well, I, I mean, the defense looked great against the Rams, but the Rams can't block us. <laughs> so like, that's not, that's not exactly a feather to put in your cap. <laughs> oh my God. I little, yeah. little spin move from our intro that you were making fun of me for this summer is it would, would run circles around that Rams offensive line. <laughs> Very true. Very, very true. And the way that, you know, the A, well, you know, at first we said the AFC was going to be this juggernaut of teams. And right now there's not looking like it. <laughs> wow. The yeah. NFC may be a little stronger than we thought. Although that being said, there's two 4 0 teams. They're both in the NFC. But if they're both in the N NFC, that means that everyone else isn't exactly stepping up to the plate to challenge them. <laughs> the you AFC is, still has more parity. It's just the quality of that parody is down here as opposed to up here. <laughs> it really has because now you really, you really know, and it's true. If you look at the AFC on paper before the season started, we were like, man, there's like 12, 13 teams. We couldn't pick anything. The right. NFC, we were like, yeah, there's. we had to scrape around the pick six teams that we thought were going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Or, or make the playoffs. Like We didn't know. Now we're like, dang, man, what to do? You know, so Cincinnati, they need this game, point blank. If they lose this game, yep, I, you, I wouldn't be mad if you said Cincinnati season's over. Yeah. Shoot, well, you know what? Shoot for that first pick. Well, we talked the top games, or at least two top games, and one game that just fascinates us, or at least fascinates us enough to run our mouths a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk some games this week that are – a little bit leaving some to be desired. <laughs> what are you talking about? Every game is great, Chase. <laughs> Every game is great. No, these now are Bears. The Bears now that the boy. Bears are in the left-hand column, that leaves the Carolina Panthers as the only winless franchise in this year's NFL to this point. We jinxed them. We jinxed them. Uh, we no, did. We, yeah, we did. If we didn't go, if we if we did not go to training camp, they probably would have won two games. You, you know what? Next next year we got to go to Jaguars training camp and St. Oh, so you just want to you want you want to take care of the AFC South first? Okay, I see how this and, goes. And 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 we take a magical trip back to our homeland up north, and we put the dagger in Bill Belichick. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I <laughs> I got nothing to do. Let's do it. All right, the old man anyway. to the curb. It's get, getting along with putting daggers in people. Uh, the, the, not, not that there's any more daggers left to put in the Panthers, but they go up to Motown this week. They go mm -hmm. to face the Lions, and I feel like that offensive line is so bad. I mean, at this point, the only offensive line that's worse to me is the Rams because I watched I, I watched that firsthand. You know, like at least at watching Panthers games, which I've you know, unfortunately, I guess I have to watch quite a few of them where I live. Um, <laughs> Honorable mention. The Giants. Oh, the Giants for <laughs> Eleven sacks. <laughs> yeah, that might be number two. Uh, I don't know. But I digress. Continue. Yes. Anyway, we'll, we'll we'll split hairs all day long. But the, at the end of the day, the Carolina Panthers offensive line is pretty bad, and Detroit Lions have a pretty decent defense and a stud defensive end as well. And so, like. The Panthers actually beat them last year, which I had forgotten about, but I heard mm -hmm. it on Sirius this week, and uh, they actually beat them last year, so maybe the Lions have some revenge, and they've also got this matted door of an offensive line to run through and make Bryce Young's life a living heck. Um, so I mean, what, what's the over-under on just how many points the Lions destroy Carolina by? <laughs> Oof. I think it's like a nine-and-a-half line. 
Wow, nine and a half. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, man, if you told me it was like a two-touchdown win, I'd take it. Honestly, right now the way Carolina is constructed, they're, they're in tough shape. They can't run the ball. Miles Sanders was a product of that offensive line in Philly. Mm -hmm. um, no one can tell me otherwise. Uh, Bryce, run for his life, just can't deliver the ball. So it's one of those things where the Carolina defense, and they've, they're nicked up on that side of the ball too still, where that defense is just going to sit out there and the Lions are going to pound them. You know, you've got Montgomery, Gibbs, those guys are running the ball. you got Williams coming back his first game as a receiver after his um, suspension there. So there's another weapon. I know the Lions are nicked up on the offensive ball side a little bit, but no, the Lions are going to take care of business. Let's be real. This is a game the Lions have to win. If they want America to say, yep, the Lions are the real deal, these are the games they have to win. Yeah. If they were to lose, to, if this was last year and they lost this game, okay, because they still were in that phase of, okay, you know, we like them. They're still trying hard, but they've shown that they can put points up and they can play, so they need to beat Carolina. Um, as far as, so let's, Detroit takes care of business. Let's say they do it in a big way, they go to four and one. Mm -hmm. what does that put them in in the kind of echelon of how the NFC is shaping up so far behind Philly and San Fran? Because you look at this division, the Bears, obviously, the all, all, all good things aside on Thursday, they're still the Bears. They're still not in great, not in great shape. Uh, the Vikings right. have gone off to a pretty rough start. They got the Chiefs mm -hmm. this week. Uh, and the Packers are basically the Steelers of the NFC. We just don't know what Packers team we're going to get week to week. So right. does, does a win here, even though it's not a divisional win technically, you know, of course, does this win kind of sew up this division for lack of, for, for all intents and purposes and uh, put, put, and where does it rank them as far as behind the big dogs? I don't, I, I think it's still too early to say it sews it up, but it, it goes a long way in kind of saying, you know what, we're the team to beat. Mm -hmm. I think. Let's every everybody else on notice. The Bears, uh, unless they go on some historic run, they're they're not doing anything. Uh, the Packers, you just don't know. Like you said, you don't know if it's they're gonna have this come from behind win or are they just gonna just fall apart and not do anything. And the Vikings, well, you know, at this point it just should be a fire sale. It's just a matter of time. Where it's the Kirk Cousins watch. Where's he going? Yeah. You know, let's be honest. So right now it's the Lions division they'll lose. Now, when it comes to the NFC, you got to be honest, and you have to put the Niners and the Eagles as your elite. And there's there and there's a drop off because we don't know what Dallas is yet. This game for Dallas is really going to show whether they belong to be in that tier or not. So I think you go Philly Niners, Dallas, and then I think you go Lions, Tampa. Yeah, you could say it. It's all, you could say it. You could say Not it. Like, you know, bake a bang, yep. Tampa. <laughs> uh, I think right now, right now, that's that's what you have to say. Yeah. You know the way it's played, and then you know you can sit there, and of course we can dissect who everybody's played and this and that. But at the end of the day, you beat the teams you're supposed to beat, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. You know, so right now that's that's where I think it is. The Lions, I are probably the fourth best team in the NFC right now. So if the Cowboys throw up a goose egg and the Lions really put it down, you make a case for the Lions and say, hey, they may not have all the glitz and glamour, but you know what? Those guys know how to win. So, um, Another game that could be a little bit lopsided. <laughs> Jeez how, Louise, man. If they put how, this on how, TV, I swear. How, how bad are uh, Lou and Louis Sarah Louis. Spins going to whoop down the New York football Giants? Like, there's no reason for them to air this. That's a shame. That's wrong. Why do that to people? Like, the Giants are just – they're just putrid. Let's be honest. Uh, I don't even think – I don't think Saquon's playing. I think he was upgraded to doubtful or whatever. Or, like, it doesn't matter. Up, upgraded to doubtful. Yeah, because it's like you don't play, then you're doubtful, then you're questionable, and then you're active. So he's doubtful. Woo! I've never so, seen I've never seen a team a team likely so happy to see the doubtful designation. 
Uh, the Giants are horrible. That offensive line was that game against Seattle was ridiculous. Really, eleven sacks? <laughs> no. He couldn't throw the ball. He couldn't do anything. And you're telling me that this offense is going to keep up with the Dolphins? If the Dolphins don't put up 50, 50, 50 to 60 points, I'd be disappointed. Like, legit, this could be worse than that Broncos game. Yeah. So I have no, no hope for this game whatsoever. Anyone out there, if you got Dolphins on your fantasy team, load it up. Load it up. Because this is going to be a hoot, nanny. This is not good for the Giants. The do Giants you, need to win. Yeah. Do, do you think this reclaims any standing in the AFC for the Dolphins? Or is this just like, hey, it's the Giants. It's like playing the No, you, you beat the team you're supposed to beat. Like, if you beat them by, like, 40 points, I am not impressed with you. You beat the Giants. <laughs> you beat the Giants, man. Like, unfortunately, the Giants were one of those teams where everyone was like, oh, man, this is a playoff team. They're, they're ready to take that next step. No, they're putrid and horrible. That's it's no better than beating the Broncos. <laughs> really, that's it's no better than beating the Broncos. You need this game because you gotta lick your wounds because the Bills done whooped your tail last week. You know they took you to the shed. So now you need this game so you can at least feel good about yourself. And if for some reason the Giants beat you, oh Lord, there is a problem. Yeah. Uh, the next one, of course, is actually not a home not a home game for the for the overly favored club as we as the last two we've talked about. But Philly goes out to Tinseltown. They're going to take on the Rams, and I'm just like, we've already made a lot. We've already made a lot of fun against the Rams' offensive line, but I'm picturing this deep this Philly defensive front seven just going to absolutely feast like an, like early Thanksgiving dinner against this Rams line. <laughs> So I'm calling like six sacks, six to seven. I'm not ready yet to give them like the record for the season, which would be 12. But yeah, I'm thinking five, six sacks. Uh, that that defensive line is fierce. Uh, it's I don't know, man. Literally, this Stafford's gonna have to sit in the shotgun all game and just count to two and throw and hope for the best. Yeah, you know I. Th- I think Cup is back for this game. I believe he's going to play. But even with that, they got to be able to run the ball. They got to be able to give Stafford some kind of time. I, I, it doesn't look good. It really doesn't. Okay. So bad. assume Philly is going to be 5 and 0 then. Mm-hmm. Are they going to be alone at 5 and 0, or are the Niners still going to keep pace and also be 5 and 0? Wow. Wow. Like, I want, like, I, I want to give Dak the benefit of the doubt, but I – no, I'm taking the Niners. The Niners are home. I yeah. got to take the Niners. I think if this was in Dallas, I would give Dallas that, that edge, but uh, I think I think the game is going to be close. I do think the game will be close, but I'm, I'm giving the Niners this one. So I believe it's still status quo at the end of week five. Yeah. I don't know if I'd even give the Dallas Dallas the edge at home. <laughs> oh my god. It's like a bunch of great players that just don't do anything. It's like you got this talent and y'all just don't do nothing. Uh we got a little bit of time before before we're at time for, for this up ep- for this week's episode. So let's have a little bit of fun. <laughs> with... Man, with all these dang teams. What are you talking about? Oh, that's players. true. But these two, these two teams meet each other, and we've had a lot of fun with them throughout the throughout the early season already, mm-hmm. mostly at their own expense. <laughs> and they meet each other, and this game had a lot of hype going into the season because you know um, Sean Payton took some hits, took took some unnecessary punches at his predecessor Nathaniel Hackett, Aaron Rodgers. That's his mm-hmm. guy. He came to bat with him. Said some pretty choice words for Sean against Sean Payton, and of course Aaron Rodgers gets hurt three plays into the season, so he's not even going to be there to uh, throw the hammer down on Sean. So <laughs> this is almost like that Bears Broncos game a couple weeks ago, <laughs> uh, or last week, I guess it was. Oh, time's flying. Um, 
So this is oh lord. So I mean, who could possibly be worse coming out of this Jets Broncos game? <laughs> All right. So here we go. The team that needs this game the absolute most are the Jets. There's no doubt about it. The Jets need to win this game to have any chance of of attempting the playoffs. The Jets need this. I honestly believe the Broncos have already just phoned it in, and it's just this is just an audition for next year. That's what I believe the Broncos season is. You know, the first piece to fall was Gregory getting traded. I think you're going to see other pieces get traded as the season goes on because they are just not good. I think Peyton wants to say, all right, let's just get rid of these extra pieces. I don't need them. Let me get some draft capital, and I need to remake this team. The Jets, after that inspirational loss, and I'm going to call it inspirational loss. An let's inspirational be realistic, loss. Because they were one call – away from taking down Kansas City. However you feel about the call, me personally, I think it was a bad call. But you know what? It is what it is. If the Jets can hang like they did with Kansas City, there's no reason that they should not be able to beat the Broncos. If Russ goes for like four touchdowns and all of a sudden it's like this blowout, then yeah. The Jets really need to sit there on Monday and look at each other and say, "Do are we going to do anything this season? Are we going to do anything? Because I know Aaron's working back and believes he'll be back in time for the season. At best, he may be back in January, but by that time, it's too late. By that time, yeah. his team is probably out of the playoffs. So why is he even going to play? Yeah. So if this needs to be – they need to call the rest of this season – Drive for Aaron. Hashtag drive for Aaron. Drive for Aaron. Play, hashtag, no, hashtag play for Aaron. Because unless you guys go pull off a long stretch of wins, by the time he comes back, you'll be playing for nothing. Um. So <laughs> you, said, you said the team that needs it more is the Jets. And I do agree with that because Denver has nothing to play for. But the Jets, do the Jets even really yeah. want to win? Because this is similar to last week, even though they lost. Zach Wilson plays well. Jets win. They're never going to get rid of Zach Wilson. <laughs> they can get rid of him. Like his contract's coming up soon. They can get rid of him. I know, but not in enough time to salvage this season to get to January where there's even the possibility that you might get Aaron back. Well, here's the thing. Th this is... We talked and felt, okay, maybe they'll go after Kurt and say, okay, you know what? They'll, they'll get him and figure something out. Maybe this is the game that that tells the tale. If they get blown out and it just doesn't work, maybe there's conversations that up there in Florham Park, and they're like, you know what? Let's find out what the Vikings want. And then maybe they pull off the deal. Maybe these conversations have happened and nobody knows it yet. But, you know, unfortunately, th when they sat there and gave their support for the Milf Hunter, now they got to stick with it. Yeah. So, um, so if they lose this week and all of a sudden Sala turns on him and says, nope, he, he needed to do this, he didn't do this, then I think that tells you your answer, whether they're sticking with him or they're looking elsewhere. This this is the game. I think this is the game of the season for them. They need this game. They have to win this game. And they probably won't. Russ throwing for three tutties and 340 yards all of a sudden. And then Peyton's like, damn it, I wanted to get rid of this guy. It's like a it's like a lose-lose for both teams, but for different reasons. That's right. So I don't know, man. The the Jets, you'll find out what they what they're really gonna be after this game. Well, we know what we really are. Don't look elsewhere on Sunday mornings. Keep it right here to Sunday Scaries with Bucks McGee for all your pregame coverage and preview uh, coverage, I guess. <laughs> and we'll be live after all the action to wrap up this uh, Sunday fun day. Of, we actually have a couple of really good games and a lot of mess that we could probably have some fun with. <laughs> Bucks McGee, week five, take us off air. Week five, folks. Get ready for the excitement of... Nah, not even excitement. It's a hodgepodge of craziness, folks. If your team's got a winning record, congratulations. Keep it going. If you're a Jets fan or a Cincinnati fan, 
May the man upstairs be with you and you guys flip this sucker around because we, we're just past the quarter season and it's quarter of the season and it's going to get insane. So, Nutmeg, it's been an honor as always. We'll see you soon.